Going by the 2017 International Migration Report of the United Nations, the world witnessed more than 258 million migrants from across the world, sub-Saharan Africa, not limited, especially the fact that they have been moving to other countries like the United States of America and also Europe. The migration has been horrible, especially when it comes to illegal migration. The international community has been struggling alongside other partners to reduce the rate of illegal migration, brain drain, and all the disadvantages that come along with it. Travel TV, your tourism channel, one of its kind in Cameroon, has taken it as a point of duty through its means of communication, this program, to ensure that we bring to light or to the spotlight all these disadvantages to discourage illegal migration and encourage legal migration. For this, we bring to you the program Bushfola in its first edition. It is our pleasure to be with you on this meeting edition of the program Bush Fola and today we are having our peace setter guest. I'm very happy and very pleased to have you as our first guest for the program Bush Fola. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, well, uh, my name is Atempetosh. I have to put it that way because uh, generally speaking, Atempetosh is a kind of a franchise name. So you look at it at so many perspectives, but uh, I want to say I reign from uh, the Republic of Cameroon, from precisely from my division, and uh, spent some time primary school life in Southwest, precisely Kondotiti. I went to secondary school in Kondotiti High School in Chichester University, University of Yaoundé. I did my master's. Which of the universities of Yaoundé? University of Yaoundé one. Okay. Yeah, I had a bachelor degree in history, and uh, I went for further studies in. Uh, Belgium, where I studied masters in American history and I did masters in international relations. So basically, that is how my journey began. Where um, I can tell you, in success to all this, is thanks to my parents. Uh, unfortunately, I lost uh, one of them, which is my mom. You can see from my from the memory the memorial badge that I'm putting on. Uh, after that, after my studies in Canada, that relocated to Canada, I mean for a better, a better life because uh, integration in Canada was more, far more better than that in uh, in Belgium. So uh, there I work with uh, a production company called uh, Wire Loops Industry. It's international. We have more than uh, uh, say about 600 plants worldwide, and uh, yeah, that's it for now. And, uh, I think if you have more to, to learn from other aspects in living abroad or how things are going over there, I'll try to elaborate on that. Thank you very much. You won't really believe me. I have a lot to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're just going to discuss on this first edition of the program, I'm sure we are going to take like the whole day, but let's organize our thoughts. Maybe we'll start from uh, your journey from Cameroon. How did the idea come about even traveling abroad? Was it from the parents? Was it from your peers who are also abroad? How did this start for you? Ah, well, uh, thank you very much. That's a very pertinent question. And those are the kind of questions I always like to give, I mean, concrete answers to because um, uh, back in the days, we had some senior friends at times, let me call them big brothers. They I used imagine. to, yeah. <laughs> they used to tell us about uh, life over there. And uh, we used to have some of them. I have cousins too who, are living, who were living abroad. Some of them are back home now, but some of them are still there. And I think that uh, because of some of those, um, uh, I mean, advantages that we had, I mean, it gave us an added impetus to us thinking of traveling. But uh, when I go to the economic aspect of everything and uh, the spirit of showman camp, that was during our period, you know. We are going to decode that <laughs> word Shomenkam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the spirit of Shomenkam during our days after we graduated from the University of Yaoundé One. Uh, we had a lot of uh, graduates who were just like, you know, jobless and um, kind of roaming the, the streets of Bonamusadi. 
not Bonamusadi in Dwala, Bonamusadi in Yaoundé. I'm in the student residential area. So we used to have a lot of, um, uh, you Popular know, friends. Bonas. Yeah, Bonas, yeah. So we used to have a lot of people there who used to, like, you know, kind of hanging out, you know. So, you know, having those thoughts, you know, thinking of what to do. So I started nursing that, you know, that, uh, I mean, that eagerness to travel. So at one point, uh, I had one of my classmates, who is called uh, Walter Bamu. We started from kinder, like uh, my friend uh, um, uh, Eugene. So the junior brother of Eugene told me, oh, he said, look, Walter was asking of your number. I said, what for? He said, no. He said, Walter is in Belgium. And he was asking of if I'm not interested in coming to study and whatever. I said, oh, I'm interested, but the most important thing that I don't want to travel without having a document. Traveling without document is very difficult to leave out of your country. So I said, if I'm going like a student, that would be better for me. So that's where I started, you know, kind of programming myself. I sent my, sent five my transcript to send them over. I had interview with the schools and the rest. They, they granted me a mission and from there, I was good to go. So that was around uh, 2000 and, 2004, 2004, 2005, when I, I had a, a student visa to study in the University of Antwerp in Belgium. So that was my great leap forward. So I started there. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. We know uh, many young people say that they have tried so many times yes. to get a visa and it's not as easy as it sounds. Was it that easy for you? Like just the first time you went to the embassy, just like that with the snap of the finger, yeah, the, was... the embassy gave you the visa without any or any struggle? Yeah, well, that was a click for me, you know. Uh, you know like there are some of things that, you know, well, like I said, I had a lot of friends who were like so close to, you know. Traveling abroad doesn't just mean if somebody tells you, oh, I can help you travel, you should just cross your fingers and watch them do it. So what did you do? I went, I went in for like research. I know during our days, that is when internet and whatsoever just came. We had, by then we had just um, a hot meal. So you, you could imagine people were standing in a very long file just to, you know, to create an email. Just imagine. Can imagine back then. Our days in, yeah, in, in our days in Bonas, but 2004 was that's the period where I was traveling. But I had a hot mail address that was about in 1995, six like that. So, like you were creating an email for about 2,500 francs. So you could imagine what was happening by then. So, you know, at that period we tried going, we buying time, solve, try to research, look for schools and things like that. So. I mean, it took us a little bit of time, but I understand the plight of people today. They say it's difficult, they tried, they couldn't succeed and things like that. And it depends on the country as well, because truly to travel abroad takes a lot of patience, secondly, financially and things like that. So one of them, you have to know the kind of what you're going to read if you're going like a student and uh, what kind of average you have, your financial background, and certain things. There are certain criteria. This program, Bush Follower, is also to discourage illegal migration and to encourage legal migration. Therefore, exactly. going to those countries uh, in the right way. But before I come back to you, he was talking about Shomenkam. Shomenkam is a popular word used in Cameroon to, to mean unemployment. So he was explaining that in his time, there was a lot of unemployment and it's popularly called Shomenka. But before we, we continue with our guest on the program today, I want us to have a look at a video of a Cameroonian, a young man who had a very hard moment struggling to cross over to another country, to Canada for instance. His visa procedure was not the best. And maybe after we have watched the video, we're going to discover maybe some of the things that went wrong and some of the things that went right. And before the end of the program, our guest is going to tell us maybe the secret we use. It might work for you, not work for others, but an advice will not hurt. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. October 2015, I remember the date quite all right. It's one of the dates in my life which I, I think I won't be able to forget. Uh, I had an admission to read, I think, broadcast journalism in one of the universities in Calgary. Uh, at that time, I, was, I just graduated from the University of Boya. I was a station manager at one of the radio stations. I, so I had this opportunity. I just applied for this uh, master's program to read broadcast journalism. I was given the admission. 
and because one of the uh, requirements for you to have a Canadian visa, uh, which is especially student visa, you need to have proof or admission from uh, university back there. So I had one. So that's where I started compiling the documents. Of course, I had no no detail. I had no knowledge. So I had to uh, meet a travel agent back in the town of Boya in Cameroon. So the challenge, it was too much. It was hectic, but I could continue, I had to insist because I knew what I wanted. And so I went to Yaoundé to the, uh, at the uh, Canadian High Commission at Bastos. I dropped the documents, they told me to come back after one month, but they gave me a tracking link where I could uh, like track my documents, what level of the uh, uh, visa, uh, like what level of the processing was uh, my document. And so I kept tracking, like the, uh, the curiosity, I was checking every day, what level I, I had to know when my documents reached Canada, when they got to Yaoundé and things like that. And so the day I finally heard that the documents were back to Cameroon in Yaoundé, I had to travel that night. And the next day I got to the Canadian Embassy and it was so sad. I, I, I met so many people. We were about 20 persons, I remember, 15th of October. And out of the 15th, just one person was granted the visa to Canada, which was... I remember it was one woman with a baby. Uh, when I received my documents sealed in a brown envelope, I I had a deep breath through the lady there. She told me, are you sure you made it? I said, let God decide. So when I took my documents, I went to a, a certain place. I sat down, I opened it, and I saw, dear Mr. Marius Santos Jongako, we acknowledge the fact that, you know all those things people will say, when you apply for stuffs, uh, we acknowledge the fact that you've applied and we went through your documents and we want to say that all your stuff was satisfactory but that's the worst phrase that's the phrase I don't want to see in any application in anything so when I heard but I was like so they told me uh, because I don't have any travel experience I could not be given the visa to Canada even though I attached my admission letter from the Calgary University to do my master's program. I had to get back to the college in Canada to cancel my admission on the basis that I was not coming. The, uh, the deposit that was made for uh, my tuition fees was withdrawn immediately and that's it. So it was a bad experience. They told me to apply again. I think I'm thinking about that for the future but at the moment not now. I'm pursuing my career in other things and uh, maybe someday I will try it again. We are still with our guest and we are not going anytime soon yet because we still have a lot that we're going to discuss with him. Now I want to move to on a lighter mode. Oh, are you okay? On a very light mode. Okay, let's let's do <laughs> when, let's, when, let's when you left when you left and say after following your procedures to travel to Belgium and finally heard that okay, uh, yes, this is it, I'm traveling. I know back then I can remember when we say a relative is traveling, the entire family hires a bus yeah, yeah, and they go sure. to the airport. How was it for your family? For sure. Well, I mean, truly speaking, I mean, my family, they were so excited. I mean, given that I was supposed to travel at that time. But the only good thing is that my, my kid brother traveled earlier before me. And, uh, so the excitement had been Yeah, yeah, the family the juice, was yeah, not so, Yeah, so, and uh, I believe that uh, during the first travel, uh, the first person who traveled in my, my family, uh, my kid brother, Robert. I was the only one and some few friends that we went to the airport in Douala here. And uh, I mean, we just gave him a bye-bye and that was it. We still um, have a lot uh, coming up for you in the program Bush Fola. But now we are going to take a quick uh, transition. That is going to be uh, a sport of one of our principal uh, sponsors of the program, Global Bush, which is a travel and tourism agency, one of the leading in the country. Let's have this break and we'll be right back. Looking for the best holiday? Well, look no further. Global Bush Travel and Tourism Agency offers unique tour experiences to the most exciting locations in Cameroon. The services include visa processing, flight reservation, ticket sales, as well as tour services. 
Global Boost Travel and Tourism Agency works in collaboration with several hotels across Cameroon and Africa, as well as major airlines such as Ethiopian Airlines, South African Airlines, Air France, Turkish Airlines, just to name a few. Their long standing experience with local hotels, snacks, restaurants, and resorts mean you can enjoy excellent services at a great discount. Global Bush is smart, kind, and welcoming staff are always ready to give you the best value for your money. With more than 10 years in the tourism industry, their tour guides and personnel not only master the trade, but know exactly when and how to give you the best of your business experience. They are brought down base of high profile individuals, businessmen, and diplomatic missions are a testament to their great services. To find out more about Global Bush, Please visit our website at www.globalbushtravelandtourismagency.com. Global Bush Travel and Tourism Agency, your gateway to Africa. Once more, we are still on set with you, still to discover a lot when it comes to tourism, travel, your experience as a bush faller. Uh, so when you got to Belgium, how was life for you? I mean, how did the people welcome you, your neighbors? Well, I mean, I would tell you Belgium is a, it's a very friendly country. I mean, they are very hospitable and, uh, you know, but to the fact that uh, Cameroonians were already present in, in the terrain, let me put it that way, uh, I think my, my landing was kind of soft, you know. So I had a soft landing in Belgium because I already had some friends who were there. And uh, secondly, you know, a lot of things can ease your move when you have finances, you know. Before leaving, I had a little bit of finance because I had to sell my car before traveling. So I had a little bit of, you know, ease with that and I had a friend, the same friend who asked me to send my documents for school, Walter Bamu. Yeah, he accommodated me for some time, say about uh, two weeks. And that's an issue, accommodation yeah. when you yeah. are a first time traveler. How does it work? Look, I mean, I've not had very interesting I, I have to, from others. I, so I have to be honest with TV. you. <laughs> I have to be honest with you, accommodating you in Europe it's a very difficult situation for somebody to give you a space to sleep just for a night that person should be an angel sent by god let's talk about the cost of living in all the countries that you've moved to we know you've been to belgium you've been to canada yeah uh, so it's generally a travel experience for about 11 years approximately yeah almost between 11 and 14 years 11 and 14 years, and so. 14 years. Yes. so uh let's start with the cost of living when it comes to feeding how is the feeding and feeding habit i also know that most bush followers when they come into the country they carry all our vegetables all the snails <laughs> all the jansan <laughs> all the dried pepper <laughs> yeah. all the plantain flour and every other thing that we can imagine the travel we need abroad is it that food feeding well in an African style, is it that costly abroad? Well, um, feeding in an African style, you can say it. We always come here, we are Africans, we like to eat our food and things like that. Feeding in uh, Europe is different from feeding in, uh, in, in, in North America when it comes to the cost, right? In Europe, Europe is just about six hours between Africa, some of the African countries to Europe. But in North America, we operate between 12 to 14 hours, depending on which state you're living in. So those are the differences. That and is to say that a Cameroonian living from Cameroon to Canada should get ready to spend more when it comes to feeding like a Cameroonian living from Cameroon to Europe. To Europe, exactly. So that is exactly what I'm saying. So, you know, I've, I mean, I've had experience in both continents and I know what it takes to uh, if I compare, when I was in, in Belgium, I, I was buying just a box of yam for just 10, 10 euros. But I have to bear with you that I barely eat yam now. I mean, yam, yam tubers, you know. Very I, costly. Yeah, kind of very thing. costly. You just one like this is about 20, 20 Canadian dollars. So you can, you can imagine the cost of living. Somebody buying a box of yam for just 10 euros, and now you're buying just one tuber of yam for, for about... Uh, 
uh, twenty dollars. So, so how how, um, how comfort how comforting is the the insurance system insurance scheme out of Cameroon? Well, uh, it depends. Life on... Life insurance. Ah, okay, fine. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, life insurance. I will match them to health insurance as well and other things like. Lucky enough, you were just talking about a half mine here. Like this, this is so when my. When you have this card, what's your, what's, what's the advantage? Okay, this is my. They call it RAMQ because I live in the French province of uh, Canada in Quebec. I live in the Quebec province, precisely in Montreal, the city. Yeah, when you have, uh, uh, this is a health card. If I have an accident, even here seated like this, I have the right to go to any hospital, and any amount that I have to, I have to spend they will do everything and book it and send it over to my insurance so my insurance will pay will do all the coverage i might pay out of my pocket but they will have to reimburse my my finances that i spend for life insurance as well you you don't they don't offer you life insurance as per se there, there are certain schemes that maybe through your job you can be registered under the, the, the life insurance or over private that you can always pay monthly because there are some companies who don't offer life insurance directly with your job. So you might take a different scheme where you try to be paying monthly and you know, depending on your, your package. So maybe in the case of debt, maybe there are other companies that will pay you a million dollars to your family, depending on if you decided to make it, uh, to divide all your benefits to your, 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 your family, your, say your wife, and your children or you want to involve your, your families like your mother your, your dad and all that, depending on how you want to do it but it's very easy and it helps a lot of people now i would love our guest and i to talk about the cameroonians living the cameroonian community in canada but before we focus on his experience in canada let's have a report on the bilateral relationship existing between canada and cameroon Cameroon and Canada enjoy long-lasting and friendly bilateral relations, economic prosperity, the promotion of democratic values, respect for human rights, good governance, official bilingualism, and regional security are the pillars of bilateral relations between the two countries. Since 1962, Canada is represented in Cameroon by the High Commission of Canada in Yaoundé. Since 1962, Canada is represented in Cameroon by the High Commission of Canada in Yaoundé as well as an honorary consulate in Douala. Cameroon is equally represented in Canada since 1962 by a High Commission and in 2017, Cameroon was Canada's top export destination in the Central African region. In terms of common membership, the two countries collaborate in multilateral fora, such as l'Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, the Commonwealth and the United Nations. Both countries signed a foreign investment promotion and protection agreement in March 2014, an agreement which entered into force two years later, that is, December 16, 2016. In December 2017, Canada concluded an air transport agreement with Cameroon. Still in 2017, Cameroon was the fifth country of origin of foreign students from Africa after Nigeria, Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia with 1,870 students in Canada. Let's talk about Cameroonians in Canada. Yeah. How do you cooperate? Well, I'm a, I don't want to give a wrong figure concerning the, the general population of Cameroonians in, living in Canada. But I want to say Cameroonians who are living in Canada of more than a million. I'm talking a melange of the, the Francophones and Anglophones who are living. I mean, I think Cameroonians who are living in Canada, especially uh, the Greater Montreal region in uh, in uh, Canada, I think uh, the to Greater Toronto region as well. 
Calgary and some other big cities that are existing in, in Canada, we live as big family and brothers keepers. So I can tell you from a personal experience and as a, as a community leader, as a social secretary of one of the biggest groups that are existing in Canada, I'm talking about um, a Goodwill Football Club Association of Montreal, of which I'm so proud and lucky to be a member, and not only a member, but uh, an executive member. I'm handling that aspect, the aspect of socialism, I mean, how to integrate people, especially those people who are coming in your first, I mean, first soft landing will make their landing to be soft, because some of us had that soft landing in other, uh, in other parts of the world. We're living in that harmony. There's that harmony, togetherness. The love is very, very tight. And I think that we still keep the faith and we're still going and we're still moving towards working in bigger and greater, greater goals to, you know, to keep that friendship. When we talk about um, um, those other activities apart from soccer, I think you know Cameroon is um, uh, Africa in miniature and we are blessed to have everything, you know, that can, I mean, incorporate everything when it comes to culture and other aspects in which you can melange yourself in but uh, let's talk about um, uh, coming to cultural organizations we have um, a Cameroonian cultural uh, organization which they operate every summer our summer begins in the, on the 20th of uh, of uh, June until September or whatever I don't know but it should be that and so during this period, it is kind of overcharged because every cultural group, they are struggling to make like parties. You have the Bahams, the Binam, you know, kind of. So that period is uh, kind of jam-packed when it comes to cultural activities. At times you have um, uh, ACC, uh, all Cameroonians in Canada, which is one of the biggest um, uh, Cameroonian um, uh, organizations, uh, incorporating every Cameroonian both fr yes in Canada, both French, English, and the rest. And how often do you meet? Well, the 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 meet I uh, I don't know their schedule because I'm no longer a member in it because they had some small political issues, kind of administrative bottlenecks and the rest. So there are problems with that. So, but they still they still exist and they are doing a lot of work for the Cameroon community. They have gone so far of, as far as creating um, a a what they call a two OP in Natal. Because a lot of people who don't have, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't have opportunity to like to, to or they don't have access opportunity for to, I mean, to afford insurance. Or I, I, my my mom might visit me for some time. Maybe the insurance, they might take a little bit of time to, you know, to do like process it. So you can't be sitting and waiting. So what they do, they they did something like the two paying attack. It's a situation where they have contacted all Cameroonian cultural social groups. They have, I mean, come together as one, collecting, like, we support each other in times of problems. When you have, like, a corpse that you want to transport, transport they are the ones to take care of that and everything. So, by so doing, if I have about three or four members uh, in my family, right, I might, I might take about three, say, four members in my family, so when there is a death in another association that we have to participate, you discover that I might just pay just four dollars. That's a dollar for each head, um, member of my family. So, so it, it is. Easier. It makes it very easier for people to transport cops now, except for situations where maybe out of your will you say you don't want your cops to be transported back to Cameroon. In some situations that we had, so but. Uh, I mean, it's a very good initiative. I'm, I'm lucky to be, I mean, um, a beneficiary of that because lately, uh, on the 27th of, uh, of April, I did a baby, I mean, a, a, a wake-keeping ceremony for my late mom. And I have to be honest with you that I had a turnout of more than 500 persons awesome. in that hall. Yeah, so, and they didn't just come there to say, they came there to condole and to support me financially, spiritually, and you know, and morally, you know. So I was super happy and grateful and I'm still very thankful to them because uh, I had this same situation for more than that. With about 40 years of experience living out of Cameroon and swapping from one country to another, have you ever thought of coming back home finally to settle down? Settle down as in with your family and coming back home to Cameroon? 
Has it ever crossed your mind? Well, uh, in the beginning, when I went for studies, I thought coming back would be a good thing. But because of the fact that I was keeping communication with other friends, you can imagine that the friends we graduated about uh, how many years ago, let me put it before that time, because I graduated in 98. So they told me things are still very hard. And I thought maybe with time, things might change. And you know, I already have a different career in life. I'm a different national. I come to Cameroon, I, take, I, I asked for a visa before coming here. So I'm a Canadian citizen now. So I'm already making my life over there. I don't think I will come here to invest in Cameroon, especially if I don't know how it goes. But with our old parents, when they are old, they live with you at your home. But over there, old people, when they are old, they don't live with their children. Does that scare you? It scares me. I always tell my children, I say, I, will come, I, will, I can't come and stay here and you guys will be putting me diaper and the rest. <laughs> I, I won't do that, you know. So that is it. So they, they find it a little bit difficult. But if I have to look at my, I mean, towards retiring in, in, uh, in, uh, in Canada, one of the aspects that would make me to think to stay there forever should be their medical system. Great Are they that green? Well, um, that's a good question though. The truth is, uh, the pastures over there are green. They're green, more greener than what you think. But it depends on how you define them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because um, uh, truly speaking, there's that English saying that we state, as you make your bed, so shall you lie on it to Europe? You fall in the hands of those who are hanging around because they don't have papers to, you know, to do the right things and rest. It is difficult for you to trace your way, you know. So I would say if your pastures want to be greener than what you think, then you have to, you know, try to put yourself in right order and make it the way. You know, before in our days in Europe, we, we had opportunity to work in some of those better companies. But we had other colleagues and friends who managed in tomato farms and the rest, apple farms and the rest. So it's not like what you people you see on the TV or when people come here to like flash, what we call it in our local parlance. It's not even local right. as well. Yeah, you know. So people come here to you know to flash around and thinking that oh so bad. I would like also people who live back home here to respect the small, the minimal amount of money that any family member can send abroad because it takes. I mean, got to come out with something, even 50,000 francs uh, to send let it me to you. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you very much. It's on this note that we'll come to an end of our first edition of the program, Bushfaller. Our guest was our fifth set of guests for this edition. And we are promising you that this program will be your monthly program because it is a flagship program of your number one TV station that is based only on tourism, travel TV. I've been your host, Larinette Apadje Abomba. Thank you very much for watching. Next month is another beautiful time with you. Bye-bye.